Hey guys, I'm Abby, and welcome back to One Code Camp channel. Today, we continue with our MongoDB series. We will explore more about relationships in MongoDB. We have seen the differences between embedded and reference models. Let's find out how we can use both of them when we have a one-to-many relationship. Let's go! In the previous video, we've talked about one-to-one -one relationship using embedded documents. We've seen how it can be a disadvantage if we use referencing for that type of relationship. For this video, let's talk about one-to-many and how we can use both embedded and references depending on its usage. Let's first talk about one-to-many using embedded documents. Let's use our customer collection again. We'll have the customer's collection, where we store all the customer information, and each customer is going to have a payment method. Each customer can add different cards for doing the payment. We can have customer one that has added three cards in the payment details. Customer two has added only one. This right here is an example of one-to-many relationship. One customer can have multiple payment details, but two customers cannot have the same payment details. And in this same example is where we can use embedded document for creating this one-to-many relationship. This is because one customer is not going to have hundreds of payment details. They can add 10, and that is already a lot for a payment method. So here, we are sure that using an embedded document is a safe and a more efficient choice. We also have to keep in mind that the overall document size cannot exceed 16 MB. So if you have thousands of embedded documents, it will not possibly fit into one document with a 16 MB size limit. Let's go ahead and make use of our MongoDB shell again. Here, we have Joe and Tom. Let's update these two documents by adding their payment methods. Let's clear our screen first, CLS. Let's update Joe's. That's DB dot customers dot update one and let's make use of name and then Joe that payment method is going to be stored in an array which will have multiple payment details Let's do the same for Tom. So let's go up one command by pressing arrow up and let's just edit these values. So for Tom, let's add just one payment detail. And again, let's query our customer collection using the find method. So that's db.customers.find. Now 
we can see that both customers, Joe and Tom, have their payment details. And again, using embedded documents in this type of one-to-many relationship is safe. It will not exceed the limit of 16 MB. And querying will also be much faster. But what if we are not talking about payment details? What if the info can go over hundreds or thousands, like product purchases or orders? That will also fall under one-to-many relationship, but here is where we can use referencing. Let's clear our screen first. And let's start by creating an orders collection by saying DB dot orders and we are going to insert one document using the insert one method so this is for order one let's check that using the db dot orders dot bind And here we will be able to see the ID, the date, and the product ID. And then let's add a few more using insert many this time. ODB.orders.insert many. And we are going to insert maybe three more orders inside of here. Let's check the orders again by using db.orders.find. And here we can see the orders collection. Let's check our MongoDB compass orders and refresh this one. And here we will be able to see it as well. So here are the PIDs of those orders. Okay. Since we have added the orders, let's use the update one method to the customer's collection. Let's update Joe's orders. db.customers to use the customer's collection and update one. And we will use the field of name, which we will specify as Joe and set Orders of 1, 2, and 3. And let's also update Tom's. So again, that's db.customers.update1. And this will be Tom. And the orders is the four. Notice that Tom only has one order detail, and that's because no two customers can have the same order details. Tom and Joe might have ordered the same notebook, for example, but the details like time, date, or quantity will be different. All right, let's query our customer collection again db.customers.find Now, we can see that we have added the orders field in each customer document. And we will be able to see those orders using their IDs. And we will use that as a reference when we go to the orders collection. In the next videos, 
we will explore more things in MongoDB. So make sure to tune in in our MongoDB series. See you in the next videos.